a woman opens her gallery in her phone. She is terribly shocked when she finds there are several pictures of her sleeping indicates someone took it before without her knowing. Suddenly, sound of door opening can be heard and music plays from the photograph even though no one is at home. Natalie turns it off but all of a sudden, the voice of someone banging the door loudly can be heard and she immediately calls 911. This is the thriller movie Aftermath. Wait, but I need you to answer my question. A very terrible crime scene can be seen. A woman lying down on the carpet and a man died sitting on a couch with their blood spread all over the room. There is a gun near them. Several days later, in the crime scene house, three cleaners got difficulties cleaning the aftermath of the event. With Jackson Pollock in the wall and blood as its pain, they must hurry up or they won't be able to catch up for the next job. The relatives of the owner of the house, Claudia, and her husband, Robert, come and they overheard what the cleaners are talking about. And it's a sensitive topic because the cleaners say about the killer who was also the owner of the house is a douche for killing himself and his wife. Head of the cleaners then apologizes to Claudia. A vision designer gets a phone call from her partner, Serena, who informs her that they got an investor for the boutique. She feels so happy. And Serena also tells her to remember the meeting time with the investor at the end of the month. Our beautiful fashion designer, Natalie, turns out to be wife of the head of the cleaners, Kevin. They are heading home and enjoy Netflix and chill, but Kevin remembers something in their past and it turns their mood down. Kevin and Natalie talk with their counselor, Dr. Sessner, about their past, an affair and betrayal that had done by Natalie. Dr. Sessner suggests a change in environment to help them give a second chance to each other. Kevin drives and sees the ads for the crime scene house that he cleaned up before. Natalie has a chit chat with Danny, her sister, and from their conversation, we learn that Kevin pulled away from Natalie back then because of Kevin's brother's suicide. And that's what makes Natalie did an affair because her needs weren't fulfilled. Kevin back to home early and proposed to buy a new house to Natalie. But Natalie hesitant to buy something that has history of murder even with great price. They got into arguments and Kevin mentioned about Natalie's affair again and that makes Natalie upset why Kevin keep punishing her even though she already say sorry and that affair because Kevin who couldn't cope with his brother's death that leads into he throws away his life, dropped out of college and give silent treatment to Natalie. Kevin sleeps on the couch and Natalie make up things between them, says that the new house should have home office and Kevin must go back to college. They go to the new house and meet Claudia and Robert. She then shows them anything cool from the house and they can get all of it with low cost. Near the pool, Kevin says that they can only afford to deal with money lower than Claudia's prospect. And Claudia agrees with additional 20k but her husband Robert seems not happy with that. The couple is packing their stuffs, moving to the new house while Danny accompanies Natalie. Danny seems to be a blunt girl who says things in sarcastic manner, comments about the dark history of the house. Perfect for burying murder victims. Suddenly, Natalie's dog, Audi, is barking loudly to the closet room where the victim was being pulled from. <coughs> Natalie and Danny check the room but found nothing. There, they see a mark left by the victim on the wall. Later that night, Audi wants to take a pee and asking Natalie or Kevin to escort him. While Kevin walks Audi down, the air conditioner can be seen changing temperature by itself without no one controlling. After Audi takes his sweet ass time, he seems afraid of something and starts whining. A silhouette of something moving behind Kevin but only Odi who sees it. While Kevin back to the bathroom, Natalie tells him that someone came in and went to the bathroom and she thought it was Kevin. Kevin then checks the bathroom and finds nobody. In the morning, Kevin complains about a dog magazine that he didn't order and Natalie got her car key lost somewhere. Kevin helps checking the messy place and finds the car key. He teases Natalie who replies with also teasing him about his porn magazine. Some minutes later, Natalie goes to work and she sees a truck spying on her house. Natalie meets her client and and she really loves her works and offers big investment for her to establish a brand name and opens 150 stores across the country. Kevin goes to college and attending class for the first time again since forever. The lecturer instructs her students to do assignment that needs to pair up between two. Kevin meets Avery and they exchange numbers. Back at our home sweet home,
Kevin surprises Natalie with a special moment of candlelight dinner, and finally they can get their romantic time together after a long long time. In the middle of the night, after they have their good time, Natalie wakes up to the freezing air conditioner and put the air conditioner back to its normal state. While she takes a drink from the fridge, she hears a music plays. When she turns down the phonograph that plays the music, she hears the door creaking in the back. It is coming from the closet room where Odie was barking before. Natalie lights up the room and as always, nothing is there. She goes to another room but the door from closet room is opening again. She tired and come back to sleep. In the morning, she takes a shower and sees note in the mirror and it makes her day. She says thanks to Kevin about the note, but Kevin doesn't know what note she's talking about. In the front door, a delivery man sends a package. It's a 2000 word porn magazine. While Kevin talks about the ghost sighting and the identity theft scam with his friends, Avery reminds him of their meeting via text message. One of his friends looks at the name and asks who Avery is that he's been texting with, and then they tease him about Avery. Meanwhile, Natalie talks with Danny and plans to have dinner with their mother. While talking, Natalie plays with Odie and throws the tennis ball, and it's stuck under the bed. When she takes a tool for help reaching the ball, Suddenly, the ball is already on the bed, shocking Natalie to death. Natalie goes to her business meeting with the investor, and and finds out that the investor's partner is actually Nick, the one she has affair with before. Realizing that, Natalie refuses the meeting at sight and runs away, but Nick insists her to take the opportunity and stated that it's only business because he and Anne recognizing her talent. In the Avery's house, Kevin and Avery enjoy having drinks together after work their school's project for hours. At home, Natalie feels the freezing situation again. She sees Kevin is not home yet, and someone is crawling outside the bedroom. She then checks who it was, and someone is grabbing her mouth from behind. Back at the Avery's, Kevin and Avery work on their project again, and Kevin wants to go back home because he feels something is off at his home. When Kevin arrives, Natalie already fell asleep in the sofa. Kevin wakes her up and Natalie tells Kevin that she remembers someone is in their home and it felt so vivid. They go to their counselor again, talks about the paranormal events that Natalie been experiencing and Kevin doesn't believe her. Danny comes to Natalie's house. She having fun trying Natalie's clothes and fed Odie. But Odie barking again to the closet room after creaking sound is happening from that room. Danny comes down and check where Odie is but can't find him. Instead, the water is dripping from the tap faucet and Danny later turns it off. Danny finds Odie, but he looks in a bad shape. Suddenly, the faucet is turning on again and it gives a scary feeling to Danny. The light turns off and Danny runs to get the flashlight and her phone, but her phone is missing. She hears footsteps coming in and close the door and then go hiding. The hanging clothes opening slowly and she hears her phone is vibrating and ringing. Suddenly, she is being pulled to the back into oblivion. Kevin and Natalie arrive at home searching for Danny to go together for dinner with Nat and Danny's mom, but she is nowhere to be found. Natalie then having a dinner with her mom, Farah, and Kevin while texting Danny. In their quality time, Farah and Natalie got into arguments and Kevin tries to calm them down but it seems doesn't work. A loud noise of glass shattering comes from outside. Kevin and Natalie run and find their car burning and someone is seen trying to trash them and vandalize their property. At the police station, they are being informed about the culprits and if any of them are recognized by Kevin and Nat, but they never heard of them. From their information that police gather, their home address is listed in the Facebook page as the best camp of white supremacist movement. The officer who handling the case, Richardson, asking them that maybe they have enemies if they doesn't involve in any of that racist movement who try to frame them. Natalie goes to Claudia's house and gives her presents, while Kevin goes to the park with Odie and playing together when Avery come with greetings to Kevin. Kevin tells about Natalie and the events that been happening lately to his new house to Avery. At Claudia's house, Natalie tries to gather information from her. Claudia gives her the truth about Jay, her brother, who owns the house before and died with suicide and killing his wife, Erin. Jay had an affair and Erin got revenge on it, with also getting an affair. Erin designed the house from the ground up, but Jay paid for everything. Claudia believes that Jay did murder Erin and himself, and at the day of that murder, all the cameras are off. While Natalie and Claudia talking together, Robert secretly listening to their conversation. Back at the park, Kevin and Avery are having fun together, when something seems off with Odie. 
At Claudia's house, Robert, who confesses that he hears about Natalie's problem with the house, offers to buy back the house with less money given the issues that's happening. Natalie says thanks for the offer, but she can't take the hit right now. Robert stops Nat and suspecting Natalie and Kevin to took advantage of Claudia by buying the house in low price when she is not in her right mind. In that heated moment, suddenly Kevin calls Natalie. Kevin and Nat then go to the fat hospital and Avery is there. They have their awkward moment when Avery introduces herself and leaves. The fat comes and says that Audi's blood contains elements of powerful toxin causing his health to deteriorate and it's because something the dog accidentally ingested. And the sad part is that Audi can't be saved. So the fat gives them time to think about it. When they come back home, there is a flower bouquet for Natalie from Nick and Kevin looks pissed. Natalie defends herself that she didn't have choice since she already signed the paperwork with Ant and didn't know that Nick is Ant's partner in gathering data for the investment. But Kevin can't buy any of them. That night when they are sleeping, a scratching and doorknob rattling can be heard and those are disrupting Natalie. Natalie wakes Kevin up and they check who's making the sound. The entity then banging the door. and Kevin runs to see it, with Natalie following. They go down the stairs and find nothing. Officer Richardson comes to the house after they called him and interviews them. Natalie tells him back when she was alone at her home, a pale white and tall man crawled into the hallway and attacked her. She also talks about tennis ball phenomenon, which appears then disappears when she was playing with Odie. Kevin himself doesn't believe his wife and thinks probably it's all Natalie's hallucinations. Natalie, who can't come anymore with Kevin's responses, is bringing about sounds that even Kevin heard himself before in her plea and wants Kevin to fix all of the cameras. But Kevin says it will take so much of their fortune, with Natalie replies it will cost less than their funerals. Kevin then fixes all the cameras and the door lock system. Meanwhile, Natalie gets text back from Danny that says sorry and she needs to go away for a while. She then meets Ant at her office which asking where is half sample racks of her fashion works that Natalie should provide with Natalie answers that she feels ashamed of her unprofessional time management. Ant gives her additional one week and says that she as a person empathetic to the shitstorm that happens to Nat's life but as a boss she warns her about what she would be getting into. Back with our favorite cleaner team, once again they got a job to clean messy place like usual. While Kevin's friends Garrett and Dave have their fun time together joking about each other, Kevin is busy in start cleaning the disastrous place. But suddenly, Kevin felt so much sick and throws up a lot. At home, Natalie prepares her designs to catch the deadline and skiff while talking in the phone with Nick, who offers help to her since he knows the situation Natalie's been into. Natalie says that maybe he can start helping by not sending her flowers with card and his signage anymore, with Nick replies that he didn't send any flowers to her. Natalie takes the card from the dustbin and takes a picture of it then sending it to Nick. When she opens her gallery in her phone, she's shocked that there are several pictures of her slipping indicate someone took it before. Suddenly, sound of door opening can be heard and music plays again from the phonograph. Natalie turns it off but all of a sudden, the voice of someone banging the door loudly heard again and she immediately calls 911. During the call, sound of door banging repeatedly overheard again and again. However, she then thinks it's probably because of the tree branch clattering the window and she says she makes a mistake. Surprise, she didn't make a mistake and someone is actually there. She runs away upstairs with the entity pursuing her and she calls 911 again and this time she says she is sure about it. When the entity comes closer to her, she ends the call and flees like the flash. She goes to the balcony above the pool while the entity opening the glass door. She willing to jump from the edge but feels hesitant, but the entity pushes her with bad position for embracing the water. Kevin comes and watches it from the first floor and helps Natalie out of water. The impact hurt Natalie so bad with fractures and bruises. Natalie says to Kevin about sleeping elsewhere that night, but Kevin calms Natalie down since police already checked the whole house. Natalie accuses him for not believing her about someone was actually in the house and bringing up the pictures of her sleeping as a proof but Kevin replies sarcastically with maybe the pictures are taken by Nick. Natalie feels so pissed and head out planning to sleep in the hotel, leaving Kevin alone. In the morning, Kevin talks to Officer Richardson which he explains to Kevin and shows the CCTV footage in the house with no one except her caught on camera suggesting that Natalie probably had delusional sightings. 
Kevin and Natalie go to their counselor again, which Kevin proposes if Natalie should take medication which those words frustrating Natalie. They have arguments again after the session outside the counselor's room, but out of the blue, Kevin is falling to the ground feeling sick. The doctor explains to Nat about Nerium, which is a lethal poisoning agent, and they found it in Kevin's bloodstream. Further explaining if taken in small doses over a prolonged period of time can lead to health deteriorations. Natalie says she wants to see Kevin, but the doctor stops her with saying that he's with the authorities right now. Richardson asks Natalie about the Miriam, leading to Natalie defends herself and questioning why would she try to kill her own husband. Richardson suggests that probably she wants to come back with Nick, who's young, stable, handsome, also he is kick-starting her career. Natalie who gets so much anger in her heart can't say anything and leaves. At home, Natalie sets up a new handicap recorder and some moment after, her husband comes back from the hospital. Feeling that her wife is the one poisoning him all this time via food that she makes, he takes banana as lunch and tells Natalie that he will go right away to Avery's place to do their school project. Later that night, some guy comes to the house with bouquet, flowers, and seems on Natalie. When she says, maybe you get the wrong address, the guy forces his way to her and makes her crawling for help. But she finds scissor next to her and successfully stabs the guy to his demise. Officer Richardson tracked the attacker who has a name of Travis Murray. The camera in their house caught him confessing the house just before the attack. Kevin asks if they can make charges to that man, but Richardson explains that they can't take Travis under arrest because Robert, Claudia's husband, taken into custody and admitted his involvement on sending people to their house by listed an online post which portrays Natalie as a lonely, unsatisfied housewife prefer taken by surprise, with a fetish of spontaneous, submissive sex preferably with strangers. Luckily, the detectives were able to trace the IP address directly to Robert. Robert also admitted the initial posting that provokes vandalism to their house as well as purchasing the magazine subscription. All of those just for trying to scare them, hoping they would forfeit the purchase of the house. But Robert says he doesn't know about the Nerium and the other attacks to Natalie. Richardson also says that Robert had accumulated a significant amount of debt and the house is the only financial venture he had going. Kevin says sorry to Natalie for not listening to her that night. Natalie feels that she needs separating for a while. In the morning, Natalie texts Kevin saying she thinks it's best if Kevin stay out tonight. In her office room, Natalie finally prepares all her dress for Anne and falls asleep. When she wakes up, she calls Kevin, but he doesn't answer it since he still works his school project with Avery. Natalie sends voice message saying that she apologizes for her words and didn't mean it. Avery who hears the message gives courage to Kevin for going home and make things up with Natalie. Kevin calls Natalie who happened in the bathtub, and she asks Kevin where he's been all the day. With Kevin answers about text message from Natalie who says to Kevin for stay away from home. This makes Natalie realize that something is off and she checks her handicam finding a man came out from under her bed using her phone to text Kevin. Silently, someone comes out from the closet room from hidden passage and catches Natalie from the back. In the hidden room, Natalie waking up with her head feels dizzy while she finds CCTV cameras, several photos of Erin and photos of herself at the room. She tries to break free from the chain, but someone is coming. Natalie asks who he is, but the man takes syringe and ready to put her to her sleep with Natalie saying stop immediately and says that she just wants to talk. Kevin comes back with flowers and finds Natalie's note in the fridge saying she takes a bath and asks Kevin to join her. The lanky entity we've seen all this time is actually Erin's secret lover affair named Otto, who had been brought by Erin to the house since she was the one who designed the house from the ground up. But after all the things Otto gave up, she still chose Jay in the end. Natalie says it is horrible Erin puts him in there, and he doesn't deserve that. Leading Otto kisses Natalie in the lips. But Otto finds out about Kevin who came back home when seeing Natalie's face expression to the CCTV. Odo actually can control the house from his hideout and plans to put Natalie to sleep with Natalie immediately say stop because she wanna help him cover up the aftermath in killing Kevin because Kevin doesn't love her anymore. Odo mutes Natalie's mouth and goes via secret hallway to play with Kevin. Kevin is in the bathroom, wonder where his wife is since the room is empty. He hears a whistle and thought that Natalie likes naughty play these days. He goes to the bed and finds Danny already dead. Natalie breaks free from her chains and screams super loud, shocking Kevin while he turns around stopping Otto from attacking him with syringe.
They fight and Kevin successfully disarmed the lanky Odo. But Kevin can't keep up with Odo's strength. Odo overpowers Kevin, makes him fuzzy and goes to Natalie's place. Natalie gets out from the room she been captive and hiding when she feels Odo's presence. She plans to take scissors but immediately Odo comes to her and forces her and tries to syringe her. She reaches Cameron's flesh and blinds his eyes with it. They fight with their last resource of power and Kevin stabs Odo with syringe from the back, shocking him while Natalie gives the additional attack by twist stabbing Odo in the chest with her fashion design scissor, ending his life. The police come and they comfort Kevin and Natalie. One month later, Natalie is packing her stuff but she sees the creaking door again from closet room. But apparently, it's her new dog and Kevin comes from her back, scaring her again. They want to share a kiss but Dave ruins the moment. Garrett and Dave are helping our couple to move out and they seem so happy leaving the house with saying last goodbye. In the last moment of the movie, the freaking closet door is moving again and closing by itself leaving the audience wonder who the hell moved the goddamn door. That's all folks for today's episode, help me to improve the quality of my contents by subscribing this channel and comment your thoughts about this video. Thank you and bye bye.